Hey everybody, welcome back to the Iron Oak Sawmill. Now, in our live stream for the 25K, you saw Deb open up her new toy for the sawmill. We're going to do another unboxing and show you a little bit more in detail on what's in the box. Now, again, we did put this back in the box just for this part. So, first of all, we got our battery charger coming out. Main body of the saw. What do we got? Two chains. Battery itself, which must be charged before you use it. Of course, the scabbard or bar cover. The bar itself. What size is that bar? I know they come in different sizes. You see, 12 inch, 12, yep, 12 inch, which is fine for cutting slabs on the mill. And of course, we have a popular instruction in owner's manual. <laughs> All right, so here on the battery is a charge level indicator. Just push that button, get the single green light so we know our battery is definitely dead. And we're going to go ahead and get that charged up. Hey, Deb, you want to show us how that fits in the charger? Getting a little tongue-tied this morning. <laughs> Slide it in, click it in, good to go. Of course, plug it into the wallet, and we'll get this thing charging up. Okay, let's go ahead and finish unboxing or unpacking. You've got to get the bar out. Man, that thing looks tiny compared to our other saws. And we got to get a chain out. So let's take a chain out of the box, get that laid out. Deb always has a real fun time trying to get all the little loopies out of these things, so I'm going to have to give her a hand with that. Okay, so loops are out of the chain. You go ahead and pull this cover off. Now, if you've had a homeowner's version of these saws before, um, this is the homeowner version of the adjustment. So there's no scrunch needed to open this up. You just lift that, that handle up until it locks open, and you just turn it off of there. So you pull the cover off. You gotta go ahead and put the bar on. Okay, with the homeowner style adjusters on these, this is underneath the cover when you pull this cover off. This has to be attached to your bar. So there's just a single screw for attachment back here. And this is the, the style adjuster they use on this, the type of, I can just call them homeowner cells. All right, so we have a nice setup here. We'll put this up on the chain box, the empty chain box. And because we're going to be putting the bar on top of the adjuster. So we're going to have to flip this over. There's a single screw in the back side. And just take that screw up by hand. It's not tight when you, when you get the saw. Okay, we got the screw up. We set the bar on top of the adjuster. Because this adjuster will be on the outside. It doesn't go on the inside of the... Uh, the adjuster stays on the outside towards the cover. And when you set that on there, you see these, these two little bosses sticking up from this adjuster. They go into the holes. And just that single screw. And they don't recommend Loctite that I'm aware of. I've never used any, and it works just fine. All right, so you got the screw started with your fingers. And it's just a regular slotted screwdriver, or regular screwdriver, however you want to look at it. We call them regular screwdrivers around here. That tighten down good and tight. And it should be good to go. Okay, one slight correction. The screw here should be in the bottom hole when you stand the bar up because the clearance for that is right here. So that was my mistake. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put the bar on. And what will happen is this bolt right here, or stud here, will go through the center. This stud here will engage with the slot in the bar as well. So it's engaged, you know that, because it's not flopping up and down. 
All right, the way this adjuster works is you turn this. What that'll do is bring the bar back. You've turned it clockwise. So it's shortening the bar. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our chain on. Is that all the way back, Deb? Not yet. We'll go all the way back. All right, so we have the chain. And for those who are new to it, see the point on the chain? That, the points will be facing front on the top part of the bar. Who hasn't put a chain on backwards? Let me know. I'm sorry, no, you go around the sprocket first. My mistake. Go around the sprocket back here first. Okay, the chain is on, so we'll go ahead and turn the adjuster in the opposite direction that we had it before. And of course, make sure your chain goes up inside the bar. Which it did. Now you don't you don't get full tension on this just yet. We have to do is go ahead and put the cover back on, then we'll adjust final tension. Just place the cover on, get the uh, this adjuster, the external adjuster on that stud. It threads right on. We'll go ahead and turn this wheel forward here. You turn this adjuster forward uh, to tension the chain, backwards to loosen the chain. And in this case, we're going to be tightening the chain, so go ahead and move it forward. All right, that's, yeah. that's the tension on the chain. And go ahead and tighten that down. Get it good and tight. Mm -hmm. And then just snap that down. And you're done. Chain is on, battery is charging. We're ready to use this chainsaw. All right, as usual, when you're carrying the chain, the chainsaw around, uh, especially in the house here where we are, you want to put go ahead and put the bar cover or scabbard on. Because uh, these chains are very sharp, right out of the box, and uh, they will cut you. We got our scabbard on, or standard chain brake, or inertia brake. Go back, chain or brake is off. Go forward, brake is on. And you still have to put bar oil on it, guys. Well, there it is all together. Battery's charged. Just got to add some bar oil to it, and we'll be ready to go. But like I said, charge indicator, all green, ready to go. Let's, uh, let's go see if we can find some branches to test it on. We have no mill slabs right now, no mill scraps, so we're going to test it out on a couple of branches. Okay, one neat feature of this saw, I forgot to mention it inside, was the battery. Okay, you see the battery sits in there. Now, let's say I didn't want to run the saw. I'm walking through the woods. Battery's hanging part way out. It's loose, right? I want to keep that secure in there. But you don't want to have to take the battery out and keep, keep it separate. You don't want to plug it all the way in to make it run. First click. Saw will not run. Okay, but go ahead and pick it up, Deb. Turn it upside down. The battery stays in. All right, so you can disconnect the power, but not have to pull the battery out or worry about it falling out on the ground. So we got all of our bar oil in. It's a small little tank. Our concern now is, we'll check the manual for this. How long does it last? Does it last the whole battery? Does it last half a battery? Is this something that we just have to keep an eye on? But we'll check the book and uh, see if they give a time recommendation for refilling the oil. It's not like when you run out of gas, you refill your bar oil because your bar oil, bar oil runs slower or runs out slower than your gas. I don't think... Um, I don't think we're going to run out of battery before we run out of bar oil. So, but we'll check it out and let you know. Okay, because we don't have any mill slabs to cut up and get rid of. We're out in the woods. Got a nice beech tree fell down. And don't worry. I already checked it. This is not under any tension. Nothing's going to fall on us. We're fine here. What we're going to do is just, uh, Deb's going to practice with the salt, see how she works out. And it should be good. So remember, Deb, you had your battery halfway locked in. 
click it in the rest of the way. There you go. All right, and of course Deb's in her gear. It's electric salt, don't need the hearing protection, but we got the face protection and uh, head protection just in case. And of course, nice set of steel chaps. All right, Deb, let me back up here. I'm a little too close. But just, uh, just this side of that crotch, go ahead and cut it off. I'm going to go undercut this because uh, there was a little bit of down pressure. Oh, wow. That oh, guy's ripping through there. Stop. There you go. Wow. Right through it. Okay, what we're going to do is go ahead and mark a few of these for firewood lengths, just for fun, and uh, get them cut up. But Deb's got the Aki mark on there, so she's going to measure out her 16 inch lengths, mark them, and then come back and cut them off. Anything? Do one more, Deb? Yeah. All right, pop that Acumark off there. Set your brake first, please. There you go. Okay. I'm going to come back down here. You got it. Just got good stable footing. You don't want a bunch of stuff underfoot. Notice that brake was set before she touched the bar and before she walked. Good change all safety. All right, what do you think, Deb? I like it. You like it? All right, I mean, we can we can limb trees with that thing. With Deb doing all of her own thing on the sawmill right now, that's a handy little tool. Don't have to worry about starting anything up, having gas handy or anything else. You come out, the battery's ready to go, you have oil in it, and we're all good. I mean, I never thought I'd buy a cordless chainsaw, but it just, or a, yeah, a cordless chainsaw, battery powered chainsaw, but that thing works really well. When we tested one out before, it worked really nice. And uh, I think it would be a nice addition to the mill. All right. Okay, guys, we couldn't let this go with just a few cuts on the, with the uh, new MSA 140. So Deb, this is a few weeks later, actually. Deb sporting some of her Christmas gifts. She's got her new steel Promark helmet there. The steel chaps with the wedge pocket. She wanted a pocket for the wedges. So, you know, Deb's spoiled, so she gets stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but um, what we're going to be working on... It's, this is the beech tree we were over for those couple of test cuts we did. But we want to start doing a good test for the saw. And trust me, guys, there's there's no tension here. Nothing's hanging out. Nothing's ready to fall on anybody's head. Nobody's going to get smacked in the, in the face with anything. We're just going to start trimming off the end of this so we can get the process and the rest of this in the firewood until we get down to the mill logs. We've got quite a bit here to do now. We're not climbing up into the top up here and doing anything crazy. So we're going to start clearing the brush off the end of this. We can push, push the brush out of the way with the tractor and uh, get to work on processing this into firewood. And I'll bet that little saw, a little bit we've used it on the mill and now, will process anything 12 inch. It will, or maybe even a little bit bigger. It's a pretty powerful saw. I like it. And uh, just bring it on over here, start doing some of this brush cleanup, and I think it'll come in handy. Rather than wielding a big heavy chainsaw around and Deb, He's definitely happy to be doing that. You're not smiling, though. <laughs> so, all right, let's get going on this one, guys.
All right, well, we let Deb go for a little while. Man, <laughs> quite the trailblazing going on here. Look at this. Nice. It's getting the brush off the end of this tree. Look at this. All with that little saw. These are all ready to start being lopped off for firewood. Man. Oh, what do you got? Ash? Looks like ash. What's that, like eight inch? You're cutting that? Hmm? You're cutting that? Mm-hmm. Working? I got two bores left. Oh, and your battery? Okay. Well, we've been cutting about an hour, right? About an hour? And a lot of cutting going on here, so. All right. Yeah, show me this, show me this thing to do in this eight inch ash here. Solid guys, this isn't rotted stuff. You can see it. Let me see this. Down. See that's solid. respectable to me as you can see this was all nothing but brush Deb's got this cleaned out so what'd you think Deb hey, there it is folks there's a, a small demonstration of the steel MSA 140c um what'd you think I like it a lot it cuts like butter if you ask me <laughs> yeah that's uh it went through that uh beach pretty well over there uh we when we shut the camera off over there, Deb was clearing a, a path for the tractor to get up through there for when we start breaking that tree down and getting it cleaned up. It's been down for a while. It's not laying on the ground, which is nice, so the wood was not going to be rotting. We've got firewood in there. We've got, uh, oh, would you set that down so you're not hanging on to it there. we got firewood over there. We've got uh, big chunks of uh, crotch slab, which I'm, I'm waiting to see that. That's going to be some beautiful stuff. Just... Just looking at it from the outside, you can tell there's going to be some really nice grain patterns in there. And the trunk, the butt log, <sighs> thing's massive. It's going to it's be big. lumber and or big slabs. Uh, we haven't decided yet. We're going to see what it looks like when we cut the upper halves and go from there. So that's going to be a good project. I don't think we're going to be doing all that with this little saw. <laughs> no. But this little saw is going to come in handy with the mill. Helping. Yes, yeah, so the slabs. It's you're not picking it up, starting it and, and shutting it down and fueling it up and everything else. You just pick it up, make your cut, set it aside, done. It's nice. Um, when we get back to business as usual on the mill, uh, and if there's anything too heavy for Deb to lift, it's a scrap variety. Cut it down smaller, throw it in the bucket, and off it goes. Where did you find this? Because apparently, guys, if you're looking for one of these, they are tough to find. Fine. Deb magic boom she goes hey i found one i'm like what do you mean you found one we couldn't find them anywhere we're always told nope they're not around you're gonna have to order one it's gonna take two months well, what happened oh i walked in and i asked if they had it and there they it was. checked and they had it see that she's spoiled <laughs> she walks strangers spoil her that's the way that goes <laughs> but uh yeah she happened to hit it at the right time and the 140c came home with her would you grab that one extra chain, right? I grabbed one extra chain. And that was all you needed was the chain. It's got a battery. It's got the charger. Well, it, co it comes with a chain, but I got an extra one. Yeah. So you got the battery with it, the charger with it, a chain with it, and of course the bar. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's ready to go right out of the box. Just charge up the battery, put the chain on, you're ready to go. And uh, also on the bar oil, we checked on that. The, the only thing in the book that says check it 
refill is necessary. That's what so. it said. So it did not give you a time period on that. It didn't say, hey, it's good for one battery charge and then it's empty. So it's not gonna be like the gas ones where we oil and gas every time. We we'll just have to keep an eye on it. And when we figure out how long it's gonna to take to burn up a, a small portion of bar oil out of it, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. It's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve, but we'll just keep an eye on it as we're using it throughout the day. What do you say in uh, six months of use, maybe a little bit more depending, we'll give them some feedback on how, yeah. we, how, we, how much we like it. Yeah. We'll definitely get back to you on how much is working. But right now guys, it, 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 this all is great. Uh, we're it's, uh, definitely glad Deb found one and uh, I think it's gonna work out great for the mill. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. If you have any questions about what we're doing here at the mill, uh, the new saw, the splitter, any of the tools we're using here, uh, just put it down in the comments section. We'd be glad to help you out. And as always, thanks everybody for stopping out. We'll see you at our next time. And take care everybody. Thank you.